Hello, everyone. I'm Richard Roberts, and welcome to our weekly podcast, Expect a Miracle with Richard Roberts. I bring you interesting and outstanding guests every week from all over the United States and Canada and nations all over the world. And one of the things that I love to do, I love to talk to people who have a deep calling into the prophetic. And my very special guest today is a woman who really needs no introduction because of the prophetic calling upon her life, my friend, Cindy Jacob. Cindy, God bless you, and thank you for coming on the podcast today. Oh, well, it's wonderful to be with you, Richard. Praise God. Cindy, I know of the calling of God on your life and uh, the establishment of Generals International with your husband, Mike, there in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. I know of the, the calling of the prophetic into the international realm with leaders and especially leaders of nations. I know the calling of God that's upon your life, but what I want to ask you today is, did you know when you were a child that this prophetic calling was on your life? Well, Richard, we were Baptists. (laughs) I first prophesied when I was four years old, though. Uh, I remember distinctly my dad was in seminary in Fort Worth, the Baptist seminary, and I went to my mother and I said, Mom, I'm you're gonna ha- I'm gonna have a little sister. And uh, she insisted that they were not having any more children, but she was pregnant with a little sister, you know. So I always tell I would tell my sister, you know, you could have been born rejected, but you know, I wasn't fighting for you. But I I was an unusual child. You know, as I study many other prophets, some of them, you know, didn't prophesy until they were born again or whatever. Uh, uh, I was born again when I was five, and I'm 70 now, so it's been a long time. But uh, I people would call the house, and I would say, oh, so-and-so died, or this is that. You know, I would tell them what the call was before they called or when the they were about to pick up the phone. And uh, I've always kind of, you know, been a dreamer or an a seer and a sayer. But I didn't realize really about the gift probably till I was around um, uh, late 20s, early 30s. Well, did you did you think it was unusual that suddenly you knew something that there was no way in the natural that you could know? Ah. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I, I know that sounds unusual, but you know, when you have that gift, it's like you have the gift of healing. So you just, it's so normal to you. It's so easy, you know? Well, well, but when it first started happening, Cindy, I was wondering what was going on with me because I would feel things in my body and I, I would actually say, what's going wrong with me? I, I'd go blind in one eye. And then all of a sudden, I'd, I'd hear the Lord say, I'm healing someone's blind eye. And when I said it, somebody would get healed. I was in a state wow. of shock. Were you like that at all? Well, you know, um, I would say more like when I moved into miracles, probably yes. like that. But no, when I was a young child, it was so absolutely normal for me. Um, and, you know, even my parents, they were funny, though. They'd go, well, maybe it's like ESP, you know, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I realized though, Richard, that my daddy uh, had a prophetic gift too, because he would preach and he'd start saying, now I know all of you out there, you know, had that pack of cigarettes in your pocket and just come up right now. And people would flood the altars, you know, and throw away their cigarettes. So he was a really dramatic, you know, preacher. And uh, he was operating by word of knowledge, but we no, you know, we, we had no frame of reference for that. In fact, I remember, uh, you know, I haven't talked about this a lot, but when I was in college at Grand Canyon, uh, was now university, um, uh, there was a Christian commune and they had heard that I would do this and it was known and I didn't really understand it. I just kind of got into the charismatic movement later in college, but, um, uh, so they took me to that commune one one night on kind of a pretense, and they tried to cast it out of me for about five hours. And they said they said it was of the devil that I wasn't really born again, that I had a religious spirit that inhabited me. It was quite traumatic for a nineteen year old, you know, that to happen. But um, anyway, so you know, um, I kind of almost by trial and error, you know, learned you know, what was going on with me. Well, that's the same thing that happened uh, with me. 
you know, my father, Earl Roberts, had a laying on of hands ministry, but he prophesied over me that mine would be a word of knowledge and that I would not have to touch people, that people would be healed when I spoke. And I didn't understand that, Cindy, because all I had known was the laying on of hands, which I had seen all my life. But when that began to manifest through me, uh, I was I was like you. I didn't know exactly what was going on. Uh, Cindy, what's what's going on today? Here we are in a world where where uh, where there's such fear and and panic uh, and uh, over the pandemic, over what we're facing in our nation, and now here we have uh, a new variant that's coming. Uh, what what is the Lord saying in this time today to you? As a prophet, it's very interesting. Uh, you can prophesy from what I call the third heavens, meaning what God is saying about a situation, or simply the second, where the demonic realm is, you know, doing awful things or whatever. And so, you know, in, if you prophesy from the third heavens, uh, you prophesy the situation, but God's solution. I think that's different maybe from our movement, you know, that we have, that we move together. Probably many people you've heard of in the prophetic movement, um, but uh, which would be Chuck Pierce and Bishop Ham, James Gall, Joseph Garlington, many, many other speakers. Yes. But um so for this year, we got the word that we're now moving into the era of the Holy Spirit, which is profound. In other words, more spiritual activity, uh, miracles, every kind, you know, the power gifts that we call it the Holy Spirit. So we're going to move, we're moving in that, but it's disturbing Satan's kingdom greatly. Yes, it is. You know, and so we see in Revelation where it says Satan has come down with great wrath because he knows his time is short. So we're in a season of great light and great darkness. Uh, there was a prophecy, it's a persecution coming, you know, but of overcoming. You, you know what I'm saying? So well, we're, we we're seeing we, that even now. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the prophets began to prophesy in our group about 2010 about persecution coming. You know, um, we, I have a friend uh, who just had her and her husband just left Canada and have come to the U.S. just for a season because there are five pastors that have been arrested uh, in Canada. You know, uh, maybe you've seen some of the videos that they're friends of hers. And so, uh, you know, I prophesied 20 some odd years ago on the Miracle Channel um, in Canada that pastors were going to be arrested in Canada. And I remember because there was an assassination threat on my life that night. So that marked me for that. But, you know, believe it. Uh, Bishop Hammond said, uh, believe the best, prepare for the worst. And I think that really says it. You know, uh, as a prophetic group, we had prophesied um, early on that there was going to be some kind of flu kind of thing that would come out that nobody could seemingly find a cure for. And so, you know, there were some warnings. We also prophesied to start to do some preparation, um, you know, even like survival kind of preparation, which we flack for that. Uh, but, you know, here in Dallas, you remember, Richard, we had that big snowstorm and those who had water and whatever, you know, uh, were prepared. And so I think, I think there is, that is a word of admonition, I would say. Well, I, and I take that very seriously, especially my wife does. By the way, my wife asked me specifically to say hello to you and to tell you how much she loves you and your ministry. But she, she's got our garage loaded with water. <laughs> that, girl, that girl is prepared. Now, she grew up in Michigan where they have real snow, where you are in Dallas and Tulsa, we have not so real snow. We get it from time <laughs> to time, but they can get snowed out up there for a month where, where she yeah. grew up. And she said, we grew up, plus her daddy was a Marine. And so <laughs> they know how to prepare. So I, I'm, I, I'm with you 100%. I know what you're talking about. Well, yeah. So I think, I think, I think that, that we should prepare spirit, soul, and body. Okay. We need to be strong in the word in this time. We need to know what God's word is saying. And of course, we're coming into 2222. And we feel like for the body of Christ, those who heed his voice, 
it's going to be the best we've ever had. I mean, I think 2222 opened a door that no man could shut. So a season of favor, we got the word upgrade, that we're going to go up supernaturally. Come on. Do we believe in the supernatural or not? Do we believe in provision or not? Do we believe we can walk out of prison cells or not? You know what I mean? Whatever yes. happens. Well, you know, Cindy, when the persecution comes, it's easy uh, to, to hold back. It's easy to be reticent of going places and doing things and, and launching out into the deep as, as Jesus uh, told Peter to do. And I'm sure Peter didn't want to do it. In fact, he said, Lord, we fished all night, haven't taken anything, but because you say so. Now, is that what you're saying that we, we've got to launch forward? It's not time to retreat. It's time to go forward. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of our uh, uh, major leaders, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado, has preached on faith. You know, and, and I know that you and your daddy preach and preach a lot of faith, but people aren't preaching on faith so much anymore, just as a general rule. And so, you know, uh, if we if we have our faith levels high, you know, God, God is going to show us what to do. And the thing is, many people are maintaining because they're afraid of persecution. They're maintaining what they say. They won't, you know, go out on a limb. Uh, uh, you know, for what God's word says, or even righteous leaders, that we need to have righteous leaders and that we need to stand for righteousness, marrying righteousness and, ju righteousness and justice. And God requires that of us. He requires, and we also prophesied, in fact, uh, what was the word the Lord gave me? Uh, and I gave before the elections, if tr Biden gets in, and I know that a lot of people, you know, that are prophets prophesied Trump would get in, but I didn't have that word. But I prophesy if Biden gets in, because I felt, you know, unless God gave us a super miracle, which I prayed for, that Biden was, I said, this is what's going to happen. They're, we're going to have what we call a Trump bubble. And what do I mean? Economically, we were going to ride on that, what he did. And then we're going into hyperinflation. Now, this was before the fact, all right? However, you know, so what do we have to do? We have to have faith in God, faith towards God, that our income will go up beyond, you understand, what is happening in hyperinflation. So get your faith up there and believe God that he will provide for you no matter what the economy is going. Because, you know, we prophesied hyperinflation was coming and it wasn't going away. We were in a time of great prosperity. You know, this is what prophets do. Sometimes it's horrible because when everything is looking good, you're prophesying, you know, this other thing is coming, you know. But again, if you prophesy from God's perspective down, we know that he, that he will care for us. And uh, the thing is, faith and fear don't mix. We know that. That's right. Well, in addition, uh, you said it a moment ago so powerfully, you talked about the year of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you're not hearing, we're not hearing much preaching on the Holy Spirit other than the fact that the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He is a person and he is inside every born again believer. And we have a supernatural ability that the world does not have. We can pray in the Spirit and we can get God's response back to us so that we can settle down, calm down, uh, cool, uh, get cool, if you if you will, you know, and 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 actually be obedient to the Lord and hear His voice. But when you're running around uh, from pillar to post trying to figure out what to do, that's the problem. You're trying to figure out what to do instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. Now, when you say the year of the Holy Spirit, you really spark me uh, in my heart because that's what I believe with all my heart. Yeah, it's actually not even just the year, but the era. Yes, you know. We know that that prophetically we can't just say, okay, this chronological year. Correct. You know what? This time. And this time, that's a good way to put it. And then, um, you know, uh, uh, then, of course, I believe and I, I felt the prophets concurred, you know, that we are in the end time harvest. The greatest harvest, I mean, I feel the anointing, Richard, just when we're talking about the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. We're getting reports, you know, uh, from the most 
terrible nations. You know what I mean? Not terrible. I shouldn't say it like that, but ravaged nations, ravaging nations. Satan hates nations, you know, and but yet in the middle, the greatest revivals. Well, you know, I, I say, you know, look, Satan, whatever you're trying to do, we're going to have this harvest. All right. You know, whatever persecution comes, you know, to me, that's dumb for Satan to do that because the church always grows in persecution. That's ridiculous. You know, he shouldn't try to do that. Um, another word that came out was that there were going to be conflicts in the spring. It wasn't clear. Uh, we had been as a prophetic group. We had been we had a prophecy that came out from Rick writings. Rick is, um, I don't know if you've met him, maybe Sukkot Halal, he has 24 House of Prayer in Israel. I've not met him personally, no, but I know who you mean. Yeah. Well, I was just talking to him today and, uh, you know, he gave us a warning oh, about eight years ago now, I think, that that Satan was going to try to start a World War III somewhere in the world. And, it was, and Satan was trying to start it so this great end time harvest would be inhibited. Uh, and he gave us the example at, at before World War One, we had the student led volunteer movement, 20,000 Americans, our student college students went to the mission field. I'm sure you're familiar with that. But World War One shut it down because they, they were conscripted and they had to go to war. And so this great move of God. So Satan wants to abort the moves of God. He wants to destroy souls. And so we have been praying, like when the Arab Spring came, we interceded for uh, that to not go into World War III situations that happened, I could, you know, various parts of the world. Well, now the Lord gave us a warning three years ago to watch China. In fact, the Lord gave me a word that COVID was a Chinese Pearl Harbor. Yes, 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 you're exactly right. And that even though that we were, we had been attacked, but we didn't, sometimes you don't realize if you don't get in the spirit and hear the spirit of God, you don't know what's going on. You know, things are just happening, but you don't know what, but that, and the Lord spoke to me that China was militarizing during COVID and that, and that, and that to show that was true, there was going to start be saber rattling, uh, in the China Sea between Taiwan and China. And we've been seeing it. Yes, right. And so I issued a word about this two years ago. In fact, I sent in prophecies even to the past administration to, to watch China. And what I said was, China will take Taiwan. And if we do nothing, they'll take the Korean Peninsula, Vietnam, Japan, and they'll keep marching around the world and it will result in a third world war. And uh, so, you know, I know this now, some people this may scare, but the thing is, can we pray? Yes, yes we can pray. You know, we have been praying, for instance, for Turkey. And just today I read in the news that Erdogan, it wants to kind of closer relations with Israel. That's unheard of. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Um, you know, all, all these nations we see, Saudi Arabia, the Abraham Accords. I mean, we are in, we are in living in time history. I mean. Well, where sin abounds, grace doth much more abound. And I have, I have every reason to look forward and not to look back. I do not believe that our best years are behind us. I do not believe that God has forgotten about America or the nations or Christians around the world. I believe there is a calling of God on our lives and we must fulfill that calling. So I'm as excited, I'm doing more and not less, Cindy. Amen, amen. Well, Christians need to get unstuck. We are never meant to live a life of maintenance. And, you know, I just turned 70 and I said, we, are, you know, look, Christ, it's not biblical to retire, okay? It's not biblical, we have gotta work for, as hard as we can, as long as we have breath in our body, you know, and uh, it's an exciting time. Well, I've got you by three years and I'm not slowing down at all. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy, uh, give us a word about Mike and, you, and the Generals International and also your family. I know you have children and grandchildren. I know you're very close family. Yes, we are. Well, you know, Mike is 73, doesn't need to take a oh, pill. Okay, we're the same age. Mike and I tell him we're the same age. 
You must have been born. Were you born in 48? I was born in November of 1948. Yeah, but that was the year Israel became a nation. That's right. Mike, Mike loves it. Yeah, and generals, we have a 50-state prayer network. And we just sent prayer teams like many did uh, to pray for the Supreme Court case that just went on. Uh, then, you know, we, we network with prophets around the earth. And, uh, you know, today we're just planning to go into South Sudan. You know, we're just uh, working on that to bring teams of intercessors there. We believe that we can go into the darkest places and pray and the light of Jesus will explode. Thank God for intercession. I, I'll tell you just one brief story before I ask you to pray. I was uh, conducting a crusade. I don't remember which nation, but I've preached in so many nations over the years. But I was in a nation and there was a large crowd and uh, the big wooden platform they had built for me to preach on and uh, plenty of room to bring testimonies up for people to give words of healings that happened. And I kept hearing sounds under my feet. I would preach and the interpreter would interpret, but I kept hearing people's voices. And I kept looking around, trying to figure out what in the world. And I discovered there was a group of 25 intercessors that were under the platform, under my feet, praying over me, not just when I was on the platform, but praying all the time that I was there in that nation. Thank God for intercession. And then, of course, my mother uh, and, and my wife, uh, they always had to know exactly when I was walking on the platform, when I was walking off the platform, because they would be on their faces before God. I believe in intercession, and I thank God so much for the call of intercession on your life and on Mike's life and your ministry. Well, thank you so much. Would you like me to pray for people? I would. I would like you to pray just however you feel led to pray, and then I'll pray following that. Okay. Well, Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time of upgrade. Father, I pray for ideas, creative ideas. Lord, let's loose an anointing, Father, upon people to know what to do, supernatural instructions. Father, I pray for those who are gifted in intercession, Lord, that you're going to reveal to them those prayers, that they won't grow weary. Listen, intercessors, don't grow weary. In the name of Jesus, just stand firm, and God is with you. And Father, I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that the voice of God will go across the earth. And I speak to you in the name of Jesus. And I say, revival means to stir up the gift, to revive the gift within you. And so we stir you up in the name of Jesus right now. We break off any complacency, any fear. And we thank you, Father, for grace and strength in Jesus' name. And I, I take that word of Cindy's, especially that word upgrade, and I transfer that to you in the authority of the name of Jesus. Even as you have listened or watched this podcast today, I send the word of God to you according to Psalm 107 verse 20, which says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. I send the word of God to you. I join Cindy in rebuking every demonic attack that has come against you in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, in your family, in your finances, in your relationships, in your emotions, in every area of your life. I take authority over that. I bind it and cast it off of you in the name of Jesus. And I set my faith with you for healing. And I also loose the power of God into your life. And I pray right now in Jesus' name for you to have that upgrade that is being prophesied. In the authority of Jesus' name, I pray and I believe and I expect a miracle for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Cindy, thank you so much for being on this podcast. Oh, thank you. You're a great interviewer. Oh. <laughs> <And it's> <laughs> well, you, you make it very easy to talk, Cindy. <laughs> Please give my love to Mike and to your children and your grandchildren. And I'm praying God's blessings over your life. And thank you for joining me today on Expect a Miracle. I'll see you next time on this podcast. Today, you can get a free download of Richard's booklet, Overcoming Fear with Faith. It is possible to overcome worry and live above the fear. Go to oralroberts.com slash bookstore to download your free PDF copy. Thank you for listening to Expect a Miracle.